Well, good morning. I'm Stan Cloyd. This is Mesa, Arizona. You can see that it's a beautiful Chamber of Commerce lower end. I felt a can crusher. It'll be in this video. And people would go, why? Well, I've got this bag of cans. They fall all over the place. They're hard to get rid of. I don't even want to take them to the recycler. So, you have to get the volume down, and then of course before you can melt them and make anything good out of them, you got to dry them out for safety reasons. Now we're going to move the camera, or take it. Sorry about the Blair Witch. Okay. I have in the past, of course, done this and melted down these pigs of near pure aluminum. The four bars in the foreground are about 98% pure aluminum and 2% mystery metal. Without a spectroscopic analysis, you'd never know for sure what's in them. They do not make a good casting alloy for a variety of reasons. Over here we have uh, a commercially available ingot of 356.1 alloy and uh, it's an excellent casting material, general purpose casting aluminum alloy. 92% aluminum, 7% silicone. And of course that lower level of ferric is a few ribbons of cuttings mixed in that dissolved. Um, if you're going to play in metal space there's some research you need to do and of course uh, the first book I ever got was this uh, Crucible Furnace by Dave Gingerly. He built a 10 pound furnace and said do not scale it up and of course me being uh, my association with uh, people that do such things is best epitified by Ed Clausen wears a shirt on his videos that says warning I void warranties so yes in that spirit uh, we've done some casting videos they're on my YouTube channel some of them are terrible and my best trolls have said well these are a, a dime a dozen everybody's done that so um, I needed to find out what size I need of crucible to pour a casting adapter for an electric vehicle my friend in New Zealand had one done he said about 30 pounds is good so what you're looking at center frame is a number 30 silicone carbide crucible sufficient for that job but since I also scaled up a crucible furnace despite Mr. Gingerly's stern warnings I had to get a number 100 crucible this one will hold safely 100 pounds of molten aluminum and I will do a video in the future where I pour that into a single casting so that'll be entertainment in the, in the future YouTube uh, aficionados say you always put something in your video which causes people to want to tune back in or stay with you. My, my, my favorite books, I called them a little bit. This one, of course, is my first one. These two, this one gives you the sandhog data you need, how to make a uh, mold, and, and it's a very good book by Mr. Amon. I don't know if he's still alive or not. This is one of the best books on casting aluminum I've ever found. C.W. and he spent his life in foundries. And if you're into the hoity-toity and you want to do bronze, I recommend this book by Steve Hurst. He studied foundries all over the world, the third world in particular. It's a very interesting book. Now, you would go, is this economical? I don't believe so. These, these bars of commercial cast alloy are about two, two and a half bucks a pound. This scrap is worth about a dollar a pound. And so to clean this up and put silicone in it so you got something comparable, it's probably not worth it. The only thing that might make it worth it is if you just absolutely hate taking this kind of trash to a recycler. Because you need a truckload to make it worth the gas. It's a pain in the ass. They're hard to store. And so people will bring you scrap aluminum if you're doing what I'm doing. But they also bring cans and you got to get rid of them. So one way to do that is to have a good can crusher. The other stuff, you have to cut the aluminum up with a bandsaw to get it in the crucible. So, are we still center frame? Pretty much. Do we want to zoom in? Yeah, I think we do. Let's zoom in a little more. Nobody wants to see me. Alright. Oh, so, the question is, how well does it do in crushing a can? Well, the magazine's a little deep for normal cans, so I put the money block in. 
I put a normal can in. I put that up and my piston sunk down because it's not hooked to anything. So we're going to back it up and we're going to crush it. There's 2,000 pounds. And there's your scrap. Ah, but some cans are bigger. What do we do? Well, how many? Let's do something else first. One, two. Can we do two cans? Let's see. No, we're not doing the bird. So we do, put two cans in here. This thing is again, uh, capable of putting out about a ton of pressure. Not bad. We got two of them into the scrap bin. And so, what do we do? Do we can we do three? One, two. Give me three. One, two, three. That's the advantage you get of having a a big platen. Close the safety guard because it could come shooting out. Squeeze it. Back it up. Open the safety guard. What have I got? I got three flat cans at once. Boom. Boom. So what if I want to do more than three? Well, you're going to have to pull the dummy block. And three practically is the limit based on diameter. So we'll pull the dummy block out. Put the press ball cap back in. Now we can put multiple, multiples of all of that. One, two, three, bug man. Do have any more of the big ones? There we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's a six pack. Want to crush a six pack in one shot? Boom. Close the lid. Open it up. Oh, look at that. Is six all I can get in there? I doubt it. I got a magazine for accumulating the scrap. Let's do it again. But that one's kind of hanging out. I don't know. There we go. Well, there's nine. One, two, three. Just keep going. One, two, three. Sorry, Dr. Pepper gets it. Boom. Fun. Well, there's nine. That one fell over the edge. Let's turn it around so we can get packed in there better. One, two, three. One, two, Three. This would be two six packs. Oh, Twelve. I'll eventually have to clean it out. In which case I may need the dummy block and we'll show you that in a sec. Twelve. Eighteen. Eighteen cans in there. Is that right? If I miss count, send me some hate mail. My trolls love me. Here we go. And so we're kicking them out three at a time and packing them down. One, two, three. That not hurt the compressor come on yet. Yeah, we're getting tight. Getting tight. All right. I don't know if that's a half case or not. Can we do it again? Keep it up. Uh, overkill is always appropriate. That's what our friend Jack says. One, two, three. Close the lid. Up. Oh. Whoop, getting a little tight. Alright. So, if we want to put them in the scrap bucket, what do we do? Pull the bulkhead, close the lid. Out they went. No, not all of them. Some of them are still in there. Throw the dummy block in. Clear the throat. Drop the dummy block in there too, damn it. There we go. I don't want to hear that joke about clearing my throat. 
Okay, now, unfortunately, some cans are taller. You get this, you build a standard can crusher, you can't do jack shit with it. At least they took it down part way. If I want it all the way, i got to put the other block in. And a tall boy bites the dust. Boom, boom. Well, soda cans are not the only BS we deal with. So I also have these scat cans, scat food cans. And they're all weird sizes and shapes. Drop them in there. Get a bunch of them in there. You can make can aluminum out of that one. They're also pretty much pure aluminum, so they can be easily deep drawn. But not cracking and all that crap. Oh, tedious. Build them up. Get a bed up and start it. Now I'm pretty sure without the cover these will get shooting out. Start building them up again. Ah, come on, this is stupid. Get it to stay, cover it up. We need a bench here, I'm bending over too much. And if I really want to pack them, throw in the dummy block. sticking out on the edge. I'm going to have to build, grind a taper on that edge so they go on in. Alright, let's clear the throat. Well, I'll put two more in like this on top of them. And three. Let's put three in on top. What the hell? are typically used in race cars, and aerospace, aircraft. I'm a big fan now. I really like them. Yeah, they're a little more money, but you know, this, there's no economic incentive to do this. This is all one of those things. It's one of those things you do for two reasons. Number one, rule number 11, a mind is a terrible thing. That's how we get started. And then number six, overkill is always appropriate. So, you know, AN fittings are kind of cool. I hope you liked the video. Sorry about the Blair Witch. I'm going to stop this and see how we do.